Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our preview of the 2015 Go Daddy Bowl between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Bowling Green Falcons. Now let's start this video off by taking a look at my keys to victory. Starting with Georgia Southern in this ball game, you want to force Matt Johnson to make quick decisions with the football. I think if they can get the football out of his hands quickly, they can read, react, and make a play and get off the field. And offensively, it's all about taking the air out of the football. You're facing a high-powered offensive attack in Bowling Green. The less they have the football, the better your chances are of winning the ball game. And you want to stay gap sound versus Travis Green, the outstanding tailback of Bowling Green, who does a great job in finding that cutback lane and could house make a house call if he slips through one of those cracks and it's a foot race to the end zone he's going to win that more often than not so you have to stay gap sound close the back door and keep him going front side or downhill to make a stop and for bowling green in this ball game you have to have the defensive discipline versus that eagles option attack of georgia southern if you're not disciplined in your assignment and doing what you're supposed to do doing your job they can gas you for big gains on the ground and you want to get out to a fast start when you're playing an option football team you want to push them to the limit to maximize their own offensive possessions and getting an early lead will put that offense in a bind to where they're going to have to break some of their tendencies. I think the wide receivers have to win above the rim on the outside. That's the matchup Bowling Green can exploit in this ball game. If those talented receivers can win above the rim down the field, I think they have a great chance of knocking off Georgia Southern. I like Georgia Southern in this ball game. Their defense has played solid all season long. Keep an eye on Antonio Glover, the strong safety, and his six interceptions. I think what you'll see is the Eagles move him around the formation and find creative ways to get him the football or get him around the football, and he'll definitely make those plays. So I think the Eagles will come away the 2015 Go Daddy Bowl champs. This game is going to come down to a matchup of who will be able to impose their will First, will it be Bowling Green and their massive passing attack led by Matt Johnson's 4,700 yards and 43 touchdowns? Or will it be the accumulative 4,200 yards rushing of Georgia Southern and their lead back Matt Breida with his 1,540 yards and 16 touchdowns that are able to rule the day? Somebody's gonna have to impose their will. I think if Bowling Green gets ahead that's going to force Georgia Southern into a game that they don't want. However, the longer Georgia Southern's able to keep it close, the more pressure is going to be on Bowling Green. That noose may start to tighten. In the end, I think Bowling Green has enough. Dino Babers has done a great job there, and it'll be nice to see him lead Bowling Green with a win. All right, so we have Georgia Southern going against Bowling Green in the Go Daddy Bowl. And just looking at this game, these are two very high-scoring offenses. They score the points differently. Looking at Georgia Southern, that's a team that scores primarily by running the football. You got Matt Breida, who has 1,500 yards rushing, 18 touchdowns. He's averaging 8.2 yards per carry. So make no mistake about it, he is a playmaker. They have four guys running over uh, 600 yards. So... They like to run the football. Breed is their best, and I think that he's going to be their X factor. As far as the uh, Bowling Green is concerned, you're looking at Matt Johnson and what he's been able to do, 4,700 yards passing, 43 touchdowns. He's a guy that has, has you know, been able to connect with multiple receivers, but his favorite receiver is Roger Lewis, 82 receptions, 1,400 yards, 15 TDs, 18 uh, yards per catch so he is a guy that can make some plays for them and they're going to need that uh, to get to their 43 points a game that they're averaging uh, at the end of the day I have uh, Bowling Green winning this football game I know Georgia Southern has an outstanding safety and Antonio Glover he's got six interceptions but I don't think that, that will be enough to stop the passing attack that Bowling Green brings to the table and also remember their coach Dino Babers left so they want to get things started on the right foot with their new regime that's coming. 
Now, for Bowling Green, they have offensive talent all over the place. Look out for Derek Lee, their tight end, who's got the, the prototype frame to actually be pretty good as an H-back or even working in line in the, on the next level. Travis Green, their running back, should also get a few looks in the NFL ranks. And Matt Johnson, their quarterback, while a little shorter than the usual at only 6 feet 220, he does do a good job getting the ball down the field. Now on the defense side, Ilar Hardy, safety out of Bowling Green, is one to look at. For Georgia Southern, their guys stand on the defense side of the ball. Matt Dotson, free safety out of Georgia Southern, is someone to look at. And Antoine Williams, an outside linebacker who does crash around, uh, should be one to get some looks as well. I'm going to take Bowling Green in this one. I think they'll just have too much offensive firepower for Georgia Southern to handle. 